<laughs> History strikes <laughs> back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is March 16th, 2014. And, uh, you know, it's just, I, I think it's just accidental, you know, kind of a, kind of an accidental thing that, that when I see things, when I'm reading stuff and coming across stuff and looking for stuff in history that I just come across March 16th, cause I'm like, Oh, March 16th, you know? And so, so I've got a lot of stuff for, for March 16th. So, so a lot happened on your birthday. Well, one would, one would think so if they right. were referred to me, you know, well, not sure. just that thing, that, that incident, my tie incident or the, something. The me lie incident. Yeah, yeah. That one. Yeah. That was from that was well that's yes that's one of the big ones and that was from 1968. Uh, oh, so now we know how old you are. The very <laughs> yes yes the very day I was born yes was the oh. My Lai incident uh, a very um, a very sobering moment in American history mm-hmm. uh, uh, American military history in particular um, you know I always try to uh, always take you know we always take pride in our military yes and we have the best military in the world. Um, in the United States and, uh, you know, and occasionally, uh, atrocities happen. And, uh, I know that Abu Ghraib was a big, was a big deal. The news, the news people made a big deal out of Abu Ghraib a few years mm-hmm. ago. And I think the precedent for, for that attack, you know, that, that press atta- attack by the press was probably centered around me lie. Uh, because, uh, there were, I think it was a, a village of approximately 200 or 300, uh, uh, Vietnamese and, uh, the United States, uh, an army uh, division, uh, came in and, um, well, it wasn't a division. It was a, uh, <clears throat> it was a group of about, uh, a cadre of about, uh, I don't know, uh, 20 or 25 men, I believe. And it, they just they wiped out the town, women and children included. Um, you're looking at me funny. I mean, you, well, yeah, you mentioned the, it, but you yeah. didn't know know about all that, huh? It's been a while since. It, well, I mean, the the about us page. It's on your about us page on the website. So it was something I read long ago when it first went up. Yeah, I see. Um, but I, I guess what I was going to ask was it Americans that killed all the civilians? Oh, yeah, or yeah. What was their reasoning yeah. for? Well, they they managed to to pin it down to one man. Um, and I don't have his name in front of me. Uh, his name will forever live in infamy. But right. it, it, and it went back and forth for several years. There were there was a trial, and there were other uh, lieutenants and and, and uh, people people up and down the chain who were uh, who were grilled and and court martialed. And uh, but it eventually uh, it came down to this this one guy uh, who uh, you know who gave the orders to you know shoot to kill and shoot to kill civilians. So the part of the part of the issue was that a lot of the people that were working for the Viet Cong were mm-hmm. civilians. Right. They were underground civilians and I think that there were uh certain people in the military uh who got who got frustrated by that. Who got extremely frustrated by it. Because you never knew who was going to come in. Because I mean, yeah. wasn't this the war where I mean little children would just come into a restaurant where there were Amer- where, where there were Americans hanging out? And they would just they would have a bomb on them. Well, yeah, and stuff like that. There I were mean. there were things that yeah that did happen like that. Yeah. Okay, um, it's not nearly as insidious as some of the stuff that's going on in the Middle East, but uh, but uh, it was not. It was a bit of a surprise because mm-hmm. the, because it was uh, the war was t- the way that the war was br- uh, presented to America was that uh, you know the South uh, South Vietnamese were our friends and they were on our side. Mm-hmm. And uh, but you know between the jungle warfare and because in between some of the insidiousness that was going on, uh, uh, you know the the underground the underground right. civilian movement, uh, it became it became very frustrating, and and, and there was no um, you know there was no push to 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 use nukes or anything like that. Uh, you know nukes had been pretty much written, you know written out of the equation. And so, so it made it a, made it a very problematic war, made it very difficult. Right. And the other the other thing about so the reason why that Mi Lai is is so significant is because uh, it did not make news uh, until one year later. Why? Uh, because it was hidden. Oh, because it was Americans that did it, and so they didn't want it, that publicity to get out. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was kept a secret. It was kept quiet. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I don't know whether it was the military that. That eventually released the story, or whether the New York Times actually broke the story, mm-hmm. um, I, I, I'd have to read read the history about it, and, mm-hmm. and I can do that on another show. I can try to try to find a good book about it, uh, a good fair, right. a fair book about it, and um, uh, 
you know, some of that stuff, some of those details can be outlined. But yeah, anyway. It's an unfortunate and not very proud event in American history. No, no, it's not. But I was born, so. But you were born. You made the day better. <laughs> totally makes up for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's much appreciated. And then the bright, shining light. Were you born in the morning or in the afternoon? or uh, Early morning. Early morning? My mother never let Aww. me forget that. <laughs> well, she didn't get much sleep the night before. Early, yes. Oh, bless her heart. Uh, uh, some other things that happened was uh, Tiberius, uh, one of the more oh, notorious uh, 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 Caesars, died in 37 uh there was a mass jewish suicide in in york england in 1190 um and i'll I'll read something about that in a a minute okay good um uh, i was just about to ask joseph levich uh was born in 1926 now do we know we joked about joseph we did we We know do we know who joseph levich is entertainment industry (laughs) well entertainment yes (laughs) (laughs) you know what he does uh, comedian. Hey, lady. Cherry Lewis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's right. We almost had your guy remember now. So that there was a bit of truth to that script. Oh, I remember. Oh. Yes. And we did have trouble with Jerry Lewis. So. <laughs> uh, the, the stage play 1776 uh, premiered on Broadway. It was a musical. Um, and, uh, Jerusalem was seized by Babylon in BC 597. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that was on, really? Yeah. I don't know how they narrowed it down to March 16th, but, right. you know. But that, that's, I'd... that was on your birthday. <laughs> yeah, wow. Oh, cool. <laughs> that's, wow. <laughs> Significant history. And, uh, one of my favorite stories in history is about Mission San Saba, and I wrote about it in my book that is yet to be Still working on that. Yeah, huh? yeah. <laughs> when is it? Right, Righteous Al is still working on it. She oh. claims that she's she's just got a couple of chapters left to edit. I don't know. Oh, I don't okay. know what she's doing to it. She's oh, so it's in turning still it in, inside out. I guess uh, still in editing conundrum. I, I you know I think it's, I, I think she thinks the same thing that, that a couple of other people have told me that I, nobody's quite ready for my. For my <laughs> for my style, <laughs> I have a very unique style of writing. So. I don't know what the complaint is. I mean, I'm not Faulkner or anything. <laughs> I think it's easier well, you're to not understand. Bob Dylan than either. It's not like he wrote the tarantula. <laughs> so he was not high when he wrote it. <laughs> now, if you were high and wrote a book, have you ever written a book while drunk? I've written an entire book while drunk, or at least a couple of short stories. <laughs> Uh, well, I've written poems. I've written several poems, uh, inebriated and <laughs> under the under the influence. Yeah. Okay, how about the ones that were not about women? <laughs> That's a loaded question. <laughs> They're all about women, aren't they? <laughs> well, they're supposed to be. Well, yeah, yeah there you are. There well, you um, go. Well, that be I mean, the, the, the reason why I bring that up is because one of Bob Dylan's best books, yeah, he wrote when he was high. So you're you have a very oh. satir- it was called the Tarantula, yeah. And Mister J knows exactly I, what I, I'm talking about, I, uh, and because he's read it several times. But, um, but anyways, um, <laughs> and, and rumor has it that if you're high, you understand it. And it's oh, I see. Um, yeah, but so I'm, that's why I ask is because you already have a very satirical. I, oh, I'm not, not. No, I'm not into that stuff. I yeah yeah. I just, I just would st- be curious to a, see. I have an addictive enough personality. I don't need to be, add something to it. <laughs> I was just saying it would make your already great writing style very even more interesting. Yeah, well. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I'm dragging this out. I haven't even had caffeine. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so yeah, so that's uh, those, that's my basic hit list. But uh, here's some things from history.org. Uh, or history orb, history dot orb. <laughs> so, so how many corrections we got today? <laughs> I haven't been smoking anything. I promise, man. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> yeah, I spiked your cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She didn't cook out the Gianti. <laughs> I put a little cooking sherry here somewhere. I <laughs> thought not <laughs> in your cake. <laughs> yeah, you know, did you notice the cupcakes were a little wet on top? <laughs> The 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 one of the, uh, in 1345. I I thought this was I thought this was great. I did some extra research on this. It says, uh, "Holy Spirit glides above above fire. The miracle of 
Amsterdam, which is, and it has in parentheses, legend. Mm. Okay. So, okay, I, I found this from Architecture as Experience, Radical Change in Spatial Practice by Dana Arnold and Andrew Ballantine. And the reason I, this really doesn't have very much to do with architecture, um, but uh, I, I, in my research, I found a lot of travel books that made reference to this Amsterdam thing in mm-hmm. kind of in passing. Um, there were other books that like told half of the story. So, but this, but this book actually had, actually had, had some detail a few years before Emma and Wilhelmina began their campaign for the hearts and minds of Amsterdam, a new annual Catholic ritual had been initiated in commemoration of the city's miracle of the sacrament. Amsterdam's miracle took place in 1345. It was a standard miracle of the era. The host administered, now the host, you're talking about the, the, you know, for communion. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The host administered to a dying man was vomited, and the vomit discarded into a fire, but miraculously, the next morning, the host was found floating above the fire, unscathed by flame or heat. When the miraculous host was removed to the to the church, it disappeared and then reappeared back at the home of the dying man. Within two years of the event, a chapel had been established to accommodate pilgrims at the site of the hearth, and soon a yearly cycle of events was inaugurated to celebrate the anniversary of the miracle. Two weeks in which pilgrims came to the city, a market was held, and on the first Wednesday after the 12th of March, the host was carried through the city in a solemn procession. The procession was a colorful event. In the front were the guilds carrying candles, banners, and statues of patron saints. Children followed, girls dressed as angels and boys as black devils. And then followed the militia, singing choir boys, priests, and monks. Finally, under a canopy carried by Amsterdam's four mayors, walked a priest with the monstrance holding the sacrament. The last participants in the procession followed behind city officials, ordinary citizens, pilgrims, and foreigners. <laughs> wow! All this, all this over a floating piece of bread. Uh, floating, uh, yeah. Uh, that was already that was upchucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. It was, yeah, it was on fire, but it was on. I mean, it wasn't burning. So yeah, right. It was, oh, so it was. It had caught on fire and yeah. then just kind of floated its way out and yeah. miraculously. Uh, and J- Julia Child, are, are you familiar with? Host flambe? <laughs> no, no, not anything like that. This actually doesn't sound like a true story, but it's good entertainment. <laughs> right. Now, here's a possible theory. Was the bread already dipped in the wine when it got upchucked? Um, because when it went into the fire and got floated out, then the fire would not have burnt it because it would have burnt the alcohol. Yeah, you know the... Because uh, some, sometimes the fire will spit things out. Yeah, um, I, I'm not exactly sure how... I mean, I... I mean, I I can see that, but mm-hmm. I mean, this is like hours and hours of, you know, maybe it would have like, been soaked. Like two years, it says two years. It was still. Well, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I yeah, I guess it says the next morning the host was found floating floating above the fire unscathed. Wow. So um, that not, would be a cool little miracle. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure why it was chosen that mm-hmm. the you know a vomited piece of host would be so holy. I. <laughs> You know, I, why not? A, well, why does God do anything? Yeah. You know, I mean, why did he create the duckbill platypus? <laughs> Except to prove that he has a sense of humor. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. never put God in a box. I, He'll, he had uh, his reasons. I guess so. I, mean, I guess Amsterdam needed it. Yeah, for whatever reason. I guess they needed a miracle. And see, and that's the part of the story that they're not telling is how it affected the town. Honestly, sure. I mean, yeah, okay, the, you know, they, they had a parade, they did this, they did that. Right. But I'd love to read the personal story of the person who upchucked. And then, you know, kind of, I mean, if it really happened, like yeah. you said, it's, it's, yeah. it's a legend. Is it a legend? Is it a rumor? Did it really happen? And were there any, well, you know, how did it affect the people? Well, something apparently happened because, you know, it. <laughs> <laughs> they have a parade. Somebody wrote it down. Yeah. And it, yeah. And something. they had a parade every year for several years. Well. Wow. So. It's certainly, it's certainly <laughs> interesting. It's unique. I will give it that. It is definitely because you hear about like the Mary statues that cry or yeah. the Jesus statues yeah. that, you know, sometimes will have blood come out of nowhere and you know and and so and sometimes those are just nothing more than there was you know a pipe broken. <laughs> it, I think there was one story that that's what it ended up being, but you know you hear about these stories and you know of course after you kind of giggle about it or whatever, you kind of does cross your mind of like, but it affected someone. And 
you know, some things happen whether they're real or not for a reason. Yeah. Okay. Right. Anyways, that's my diet trap. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the, it's my yeah. little soapbox for today. The theology 101. Oh, yes. Uh, f- uh, 1517, Pope Leo X signs Fifth Council Lanter- Lateran. Um, Say that three times fast. King Gustav uh, the Third in 1792. King Gustav the Third of Sweden is shot by a Count Ankerstrom at a masked ball at the opera, and he died on uh, Gustav died on March 29th. Hmm. Poor guy. The first U.S. black newspaper, Freedom's Journal, began publishing in 1827. Cool. I believe that was based in New York. Oh, that was before the Civil War, wasn't it? Yep, sure was. Wow. Yep. In 1900, Sir Arthur Evans finds Old City of Kenosis. Uh, in 1922, Sultan Faoud the I was crowned king of Egypt, and then England recognizes Egypt. Said, I know you, you're <laughs> Egypt. You look quite a lot like Egypt. In 1926, Robert Goddard launches the first liquid fuel rocket, and it goes 184 Ooh. feet. Oh, no, that would have been fun. Yeah. Uh, 1941, two things happen. We have uh, uh, blizzard hits North Dakota and Minnesota, killing 60. You have a thing for cold weather. Yeah. Isn't that something? That's something. <laughs> you don't like cold, do you? Global warming. Mm. Global warming. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's happening. Sure. Ocean level's rising. Keep going. Uh, in 1941, Dmitry Shostakovich receives the Stalin Prize. Cool. Yeah. What's the Stalin Prize? Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's probably something Stalin gave to people for being cool. I don't know. Yeah. Or for uh, being good little commies or. Well, Shostakovich, he was a composer. Oh, that's right. We talked about him a couple yeah, of. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah the <laughs> Go. If you link to the episode, is down. I will find it. <laughs> In 1945, the Allies secure Iwo Jima. And I guess, yeah, I'd secure, I guess made it safe for more allies. Cool. Uh, and then in uh, 1952, we have Babe Didrikson Zaharias. She win, wins the LPGA title holders golf championship. Good for her. Hey, women world, right? Yeah. <laughs> Woman's world, yes. Yes, absolutely. You know, if we, if we could have it, women should rule the world, right? Yes. Well, men don't know it, but we already do because they say the man is the head of the household. But Who the is? woman is the neck. You and got she it, ma'am. Can turn the head any way she wants. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'd like to nominate myself for president based on that fact right there. <laughs> <laughs> I concur. <laughs> I'll make you a cake. <laughs> or an <omelet>. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we'll have the president and the first lady all rolled up in one. Uh. <laughs> Uh, in 1962, the U.S. super constellation disappears above the Pacific Ocean and kills 167. And I tried to do some research on that. Also, I was trying to I was curious about it. I didn't, you know, didn't I didn't first I didn't know what a super constellation was, and then uh, um, and then I didn't know about you know the whole thing. So. Um, <laughs> so what say. is a super so, constellation? I know it can't be stars in well, the sky. Well, it's an airplane. It's an airplane. Uh, it's a, it, it was actually used as a. Well, it was a. It became a civilian plane. I can't okay. remember. I can't remember where the original design started. I think the. I think it originally started as a civilian plane. Okay. And then the uh, Air Force or Army or whoever used it began using it as a transport plane. And the reason why there isn't very much information about it is because it was a military transport plane. Well, there you go. So. Um, Robert Kennedy in 1968 uh, announced his presidential campaign. In 1968? Mm-hmm. Oh, the day you were born. The 13th Grammy Awards in 1971. troubled water. Ah. I uh, like that song. One. Yes, I, I, I generally like Simon and Garfunkel, but some of the Garfunkel songs are so mm-hmm. whiny. Well, that was the era. It was the the <laughs> time. It was that folk music. Yeah, that's when they were trying to conquer the world through uh, uh, music yeah. and wor- words and dude. <laughs> you ever notice the peace sign is perfectly capable? Right, like all you have to do is squeeze your fingers and then use it. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I never knew you were into that kind of thing. I uh, <laughs> no, I just I had friends. What happened? Somebody smoked a cigarette, flicked it, and somebody else saw it, and it became <laughs> an epidemic. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> And then in 1994, I've got uh, Tanya Harding pleads guilty to the felony attack on Nancy Kerrigan. Oh, that was 94, huh? Yep. That's <laughs> cool. Well, no, not cool. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> you know, they did a story on her. She evidently, about a year later, she saved someone's life, and they made a big deal about Tanya Harding. Is that right? Yeah. Huh. So that was, I think they were trying to get do publicity. Yeah. But bless her little heart, you know, she ended up going to the Olympics and then she broke her shoelace on the ice. I mean, you just kind of do have to feel sorry for her because it wasn't her doing the act. It was like a boyfriend or something. And all she wanted was to skate in the Olympics. And Nancy Kerrigan was just better. <laughs> in the way. <laughs> Mm, she was just, she was there. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so that's what I got. That's all I got for History Strikes Back. All right.